when villages grow into towns, towns into cities, shops into malls, spaces into estates, when avenues turn into highways, superhighways, subways and runways, then things change. Villages become old, frail women deserted by their offsprings, all gone to the cities with big lights who, unlike prodigal sons, only return in coffins. Homesteads empty like the stare of a nine-year-old, eyes stiffened by industrial glue liquid, face barren of emotion. City streets give birth to illegitimate children, street children who at the age of six hang around city corners begging for a shilling but at the age of 16 you beg them not to harm you as they rob from you in these big city streets and big mall corners, subways and highways. Estates and villas, suburbs and urban spaces, metropolitan cities and industrial areas become fathers who sow wild oats to slum ghettos, poverty stricken valleys. In these valleys, girls quickly mature into women, hiring children at the age of 16, maybe even 13, where single families spring quicker than a spring chicken, where lands mushroom into shanties and ghettos with no jobs in mine, mines, or offices. When kids can't go to school, only to sit in the sun counting cars, watching others live their dreams while theirs have been packed away like the textbook in their bags, then innocence changes. When husbands neglect wives for brewing dance, choosing illicit drinks over tuition fees, when kids go hungry for days and nights, fathers are jobless, father, mothers are drunkards. When all one can show for years of sacrifice in school is a piece of paper, a college degree, while unqualified minds run governments and offices, minds change. When opportunity looks at the color of your skin, asking for your names, who you know with lots of muscles, politically, economically, spiritually, when your surname, skin tone, determines what doors remain shut, who calls you up for a job, what neighborhoods you can take a stroll in, then minds change. Thank you. You can see why Jerry is one of Kenya's most successful poets. The poem is available in her latest book, which is called Minds and Minefields. So you can see her for a few more details later. Now I'd like to welcome Global Voices co-founder and you know an inspiration to many of us, Ethan Zuckerman, to kick off the summit with the first panel. Thank you so much, Dowdy. And let's get a round of applause for this extraordinary individual who's going to be leading us through this conference. You know, for me, as someone who's now had the chance to work on this project, to, to parent, to co-parent this uh, seven-year-old, as Dowdy explains it, and if I could get my co-parent, Rebecca McKinnon, uh, the, uh, the co-founder of the organization, to stand up. Uh, when, when Rebecca and I started working on this, one of the things we never could have dreamed is the way in which Global Voices would lead us to have extraordinary friends like Dowdy all over the world. So we're so grateful that he's able to be with us and lead us today uh, through the summit. So our opening panel today is addressing a question that's something that we've been talking about since the very early history of Global Voices. And I actually have to correct Dowdy's history slightly because in a very strange way, this is actually the sixth Global Voices Summit. The first Global Voices Summit happened before there was a Global Voices. And we had a conversation at Harvard University uh, now, almost eight years ago, where we brought together some of the very early bloggers from around the world who are trying to figure out 
how to use this new technology, use this ability to write online and share your information with the rest of the world. And we brought 40 people together in a room and said, do we have something in common? And the answer was a resounding yes. We decided that we had two things in common. We had a dedication to the idea that we wanted the internet to be a place for free and open speech. And we felt like we wanted to know what was going on in each other's corner of the world. And as you've seen Global Voices grow out of it, it really has grown out of these two ideas. It's grown out of these ideas that we want to know what each other is thinking and doing and feeling and talking about. And we want to ensure that the internet remains a space where we can have that conversation. So when we started this, we had the question, is this a movement? And we asked the first 40 people that we sat down with, and they said, of course it's a movement. But that's actually become a much more complicated question. Because now, eight years later, citizen media is a part of everyone's life. This isn't a strange thing that bloggers do. This is something that's part of the mainstream media. You go to any quality newspaper, and they have blogs, they have opinion, they have participation, they have a Twitter feed. And we see that citizen media may not be a single global movement. It may be lots of different local movements with people working on their own issues, working on their own questions, and an open question about whether we have more in common or more that's different between all of the movements, all of the energy that we're doing individually. So that's what we want to address this morning. We want to ask this question, is citizen media many movements? Is it one movement? How do we work together on it? And we are blessed to have with us four extraordinary panelists. Each one is going to come up and talk a little bit about their own work and the issues in their circumstances. And we're going to have a brief discussion, the four of us up here. So I'm going to invite people up one by one, then I'm going to invite all four of us to have a conversation, but I'm going to introduce them one at a time, and I'm going to start by introducing someone who's been involved with our community from very, very early on. He's one of the Philippines' top bloggers, an extraordinary young man who, when we first met him, we knew him simply as a wonderful online commentator. Now that he's serving his second term as a member of parliament in the Philippines, we now have to address him as the Honorable Mong Palatino. So I would like to welcome our dear friend Mong to the stage to talk about uh, citizen media, politics, Southeast Asia. Nice to have you.